situation. She uh, fainted, and uh, not sure exactly why she fainted, but uh, she broke her jaw, her jaw, excuse me, her mouth, and a few teeth as well, and of course, uh, she needs a miracle, and my wife says she's a very cheerful uh, young uh, lady and teacher and helps train other teachers and everything, but we know a God that can do the impossible. Amen. We know that he can do it. Now, when I read that, that's an impossibility, and I don't know how God's going to do it, but I know the Lord is going to do it. Amen? Amen. We know that if we pray in Jesus' name, it can happen. Would you lift your hands, lift your voices, and let's go to the throne of grace and faith. Jesus, uh, we're asking you again to do the impossibility. You have done it overseas. You have done it here in Marana. You've done it in this congregation. We're asking God that you touch Stephanie tonight, God, that you would touch her, that you would do a complete, miraculous move upon her body. God, we're asking that you would reach her. Let her know, God, that there is a God that can heal. Heal her. Show, God, that you are strong in Jesus' name, in your wonderful name. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to take too much with uh, everything. I have our offering plates come up, whoever has it. Uh, I know I mentioned it Thursday. I know not everyone could be there Thursday due to work schedule, family schedule. So I want to brag on the P7 evangelists and missionaries. Some are here tonight, some couldn't be here tonight. I think we have about five to six apostolic young people in Miranda High School. Amen. Amen. And before, praise God, before it was just Solomon and then Jonathan. And then now, now it's, we got about three young, four young ladies and another young man. So yeah, about six all together. Solomon got old. He's at Pima Community College and we'll let him evangelize that on the Northwest side. And Savannah, she's there too, I believe. So um, but they had 50, about 50 young people, students. In fact, the teacher, the faculty, uh, what I hear, uh, said, you know what, we, you can't have you out in the courtyard. If you get just too big, so we'll just give you the classroom. Uh, and then young Jonathan Lopez here opened it up and, and teached and preached to them and says, God hears your prayers. Go ahead and pray. Amen. That excites me. There's over 2,000 students there. And this is the Aver Valley area. I know there's a community, Aver Valley, or the Bedoys and Mark Hughes lives, a uh, uh, community of Red Rock, uh, where Darlene and Gerald, they live there, my family lives there, uh, there's Morana, uh, there's Picture Rocks, uh, I believe Missile Base, and there's all kinds of communities. Well, they all go, unless they go to a charter high school, they all go to Morana High School. And so we're touching all that area in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And by faith, and I know you believe it, we're going to have a service there. And we're going to let people be touched, other people be touched, and it's going to be a good time. Amen? Amen. And so we're thankful for that. Your giving is very important. We make sure that it is used wisely. And so let's give unto the Lord tonight. And, uh, well, I don't know. Just smile and let them give. Praise God. Thank you. <laughs>
Praise God. Psalms chapter 46 and verse 1 through 7. Not too lengthy to be honest. And, uh, Psalm 46 verses 1 through 7. And simply reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Salah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. Verse 5 says, God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved, God shall help her in that right early. Then, or the heathen rage, excuse me, the kingdoms were moved, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. And then finally, verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge, Salah. Amen, praise God. You may be seated. I want to, uh, tonight, uh, or if they can put, Ken will put that up, go ahead. Uh, my title is God is at your service. Man, look at your neighbor and say, God is at your service. Man, say it again like you're not afraid. God is at your service. God is at your service. Man. <laughs> Probably not something you something you're not never really going to hear, but at least you heard it tonight. And uh, God is at your service. Uh, we've all heard the phrase at your service in one form or one uh, way or another. Uh, it simply means that somebody is ready or available for someone else's use. And it implies I am happy to be at your service. If you have any questions or needs, I'm here to serve you. Uh, and basically, to be at someone's service is a hospitable expression and means to be ready to help whenever possible. And if I'm at your service uh, is something you've heard, I'm sure you will hear it over and over. Sometimes you can tell that person means it. And sometimes you know they don't mean it. If you're facetious like me, you may just... Uh, poke a little and ask him to help anyhow. Um, I, I'm, when I think about this phrase, I also think about Chick-fil-A, which I'm thankful they're a Christian organization. I wish, though, they were a little carnal and open on Sundays because, man, I, I, I go for a, one of those sandwiches that I like. But uh, at the end, they'll say, my pleasure. And uh, most of the time, you can hear that they mean it. Sometimes that little teenager is like, my pleasure. <laughs> and you can tell with the, the facial expression or the body language, they don't. Uh, go to In-N-Out and uh, they'll say sometimes, is there anything I can do for you? Give you a refill uh, because they're at your service. So, uh, I was recently at Under Armour trying to get some of those 50%, 60% off. By the way, they're here in Miranda. They have some good deals. Go get it. And uh, anyways, if you like that stuff. And uh, uh, they always, always, I don't think they've ever failed. You walk in. And uh, they're pleasant, and uh, they'll say, is there anything I can help you find today? And generally, I will say, no, I'm just browsing, because I don't like people bothering me. I want to find it and then not feel pressured. And they don't usually pressure there. Uh, then they'll say, my name is such and such. If you need anything, just let me know. In other words, uh, I'm at your service. Amen. So I'm thankful tonight that God is at our service. Amen. Reading that scripture, the Bible says here, the Lord of hosts is with us. Uh, the God of Jacob uh, is our refuge. That's a modern uh, uh, or a biblical way to say that God is with you. Uh, no matter the need, no matter the time, uh, he'll be at your service for refuge. Amen. Uh, some people want to know how to find God. Uh, the Bible tells us that God is a very present help uh, in the time of need and trouble. Amen. You want to find God, uh, he's attracted for some reason at your need uh, and your trouble. Amen. He is at your service. Uh, I think about the miracles that the Lord has done uh, in this town, in the surrounding areas. Uh, let me just say that God has given us the land uh, and dominion and territory. Uh, uh, we're thinking, Miranda, we planned and strategized even before this uh, to hit other communities. Uh, and I mentioned it earlier. Uh, uh, but sometimes the enemy can just paint the picture. Amen. He painted the picture for Moses uh, and how bad it was. Moses, uh, you stutter. Uh, Moses, uh, you, you know, you killed a man. 
Now Moses, uh, you're, you're a vagabond, you're a, a convict, if you will, you're on the run. Uh, and the devil's really good uh, at telling how bad you are uh, and all the circumstances that you uh, have. Amen. Uh, but we have to learn, if not already, uh, or be reminded, uh, we have to remind the devil, uh, or like King David did, he encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, and I'm thankful that you and I can encourage each other, and I encourage you to, to fellowship with one another, because that's encouraging. We may not talk about the Bible, but it's encouraging. Uh, uh, but David encouraged himself in the Lord, uh, and Moses had to do that. Uh, and so sometimes we just got to do that, encourage ourselves. Uh, uh, but sometimes we got to let God encourage us. Amen. Uh, the devil's good at painting a bad picture. Uh, he's good at painting how good it is out in the world. Uh, how good it is. Uh, throw in the towel. Uh, what's the use? Uh, but you got to get back into the devil and in your mind uh, and say, you know what? Uh, God's been too good to me. Uh, God's been too good to me. Uh, he is a present help uh, in a time of refuge. I want you to know tonight, uh, I was thinking about these things, uh, and I thought about Donna, not uh, Sister Donna Stewie here, glad she's among the living, but Donna, about, I, I, I'm getting old, I guess, I forget, she was in her late 70s, and I mentioned it time after time, uh, uh, but how she made it to heaven, I thought, and I remind the devil of that, uh, I said, if nothing else, uh, Donna made it to heaven, amen, uh, I'm thinking about the Bedoys, amen, and how the devil had you, uh, and the devil had you on the target, uh, and talked about how you can't worship, uh, but I I appreciate your worship, uh, and I appreciate that the, the enemy understands uh, he can't shut your worship up anymore. Man, I, I think about the Higuera family, and Pastor Connor mentioned this morning uh, that miracle of you had cancer and now you don't have cancer. Amen. Uh, I'm reminding uh, ourselves tonight uh, God's been good to us. Yeah. I think about Mark Hughes, and I baptized you so many years ago. Uh, got discouraged, whatever it was, uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, the, uh, that little uh, uh, $5 boost on Facebook, we're moving to Grace Retreat. Uh, you probably thought I was crazy. I thought I was crazy, but all I know uh, is that I heard a word from the Lord uh, called Grace Retreat uh, and asked him if you can rent their building. Uh, and they said, we'll give it to you for free. Uh, you've been too good to us. Uh, and all of a sudden, I get a call the next day. Uh, and before that, the devil was saying, look at you. Uh, you're trying to show off. And I don't know why the devil wanted to do that. It's just a $5 uh, boost that we're moving to Grace Retreat. Uh, but he knew very well uh, that a Mark Hughes... Uh, was going to come home. And he called the next day. I said, well, anyway, it's at this time in this place. Uh, excuse me, who am I talking to? He said, this uh, is Mark Hughes. Uh, eight years or so gone from the Lord. Uh, God's been too good to us. And Landon gets baptized, gets the Holy Ghost. Uh, and, his, uh, and Elijah gets the Holy Ghost uh, and Brielle's going to get the Holy Ghost and she'll be baptized like them uh, God's been so good to us uh, at least I forget uh, oh Peggy driving uh, right there at the, at, at the Continental Ranch uh, seeing Solomon and the kids uh, I'll tell you you scared him uh, this lady comes and he's like what's going on he, he, he's young uh, not because you look scary but he didn't know what to do I'm trained about it uh, I remember she walked in uh, teaching about the spiritual gifts. Uh, and she said, I've been looking for a Jesus name church. Uh, oh, uh, one of our prayers is God, let them come off uh, the road. Let them come off uh, and fill a joy. And the rest is history. Uh, and oh, Sister Arlene, uh, Sister Arlene, you came uh, and your mother Peggy came uh, uh, and she got baptized. Uh, she was in a coma, so to speak. Uh, I, I felt bad as a pastor. I was sick. Uh, I couldn't go pray with her. I can't only go pray with her uh, because I don't want to get her sick. Uh, and Peggy uh, ended up going in a coma. I, I, I text you all. I said, we got to pray. Huh? We got to pray. Huh? We got to ask God to do something. I didn't feel goosebumps. Huh? I said, Lord, huh? you got to do the miraculous. It's got to be a book of Acts thing. Huh? We got somebody that needs to be baptized. Huh? Well, obviously, Jesus' name baptism is so important huh? that he resurrected your good mother and Gerald, your good wife. Huh? And you know what? Huh? We baptized.
pastor, the assistant living. Uh, some of you were there. Then I said, Lord, I, I don't know what else I can do. Uh, I, she needs the Holy Ghost, uh, and I don't know what to do. I really don't. Uh, I don't know if I go in. Uh, I don't know how she's going to get the Holy Ghost. Uh, but Sister Darlene didn't give up. Uh, she said, Mom, you must receive the gift uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, evidence and speaking in other tongues, uh, like the Bible said. Uh, and then she gets a call a few days later. Uh, and I, I rebuke the spirit of doubt. Uh, I rebuke the negativism. Uh, I believe it in my spirit. I feel a witness of the Holy Ghost uh, every time I say it. Uh, and she said, uh, my mother called and said I was praying. Uh, and I began to speak uh, in another language. Uh, and I do not know what it is. Uh, I'm telling you the revival that is here will not be controlled. Uh, it is uh, nothing that we control. We need to flow with it uh, or we don't. Uh, she got it. And it doesn't end there. <laughs> Because let me tell you, God is at our service. Anything we need, anything we want. You need a miracle in your mind. God is at your service. You need a miracle in your body. God is at your service. You got some excellent, those that have been discouraged and have left the Lord. God is at your service. Whatever you need is at your disposal. Then, Brother Gerald. Man, wave your hand for the chair. Hey man, I'm not trying to embarrass Shady, nine years old. Knows that there is only one God. Yeah. <laughs> Understands that here on Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Uh, and oh, uh, we baptized him just a couple months ago uh, at his neighbor's house uh, on Continental Ranch uh, for the remission of his sins. Uh, Gerald, I'm believing uh, that you're going to receive that spirit of the Holy God of Israel uh, inside you just like your wife. Uh, oh, I'm believing tonight uh, that it's going to happen uh, because anything is possible with the Lord. Uh, Anything. Amen. Amen. God is at your service. Would you lift your hands right now? Would you love the Lord and thank Him for those testimonies? Those testimonies of, of refuge. Of refuge. Amen. Amen. What an incredible testimonies, if you will, or incredible testimonies, excuse me, that we just heard. And the promises of God are always there. God is our refuge and strength. He is a very present help in a time of trouble. Literally, that means that God is a very available help uh, and is easy to be found. Uh, in fact, in 2 Chronicles 15, uh, Azariah told Asa, God will stick with you uh, as long as you stick with him. Uh, if you look for him, uh, he will let himself be found. Uh, then he explained further in that chapter uh, that when Israel, uh, God's people, uh, the Jewish nation, uh, got in trouble and turned to the Lord, uh, he said this in verse 4, uh, he was found of them. Uh, I want you to know, uh, even if you get yourself in trouble, uh, even if you did it, uh, even if you sinned, uh, God is still there to be found found of you. Huh? The time to run to God huh? is not when you fail. Huh? It's the time to run to God huh? and not run to the world huh? and not run to prayerlessness huh? because God is at your service. Amen. Doesn't matter if the whole world uh, is in turmoil. Huh? Let, me, let me pause here. It just came to my mind again. Huh? I want to encourage you again. Huh? Uh, Sister Metz is not here tonight, but Brother Metz is here. Huh? We've been declaring for the last few years, huh? your children are coming home. Huh? Your children are coming home. Huh? And every Sunday morning, huh? I, I don't think, I've missed a couple Sunday mornings I was at church or somewhere else preaching, all right? Well, playing hooky. Huh? Uh, but uh, I believe every Sunday morning for the last, what, two months, give or take, huh? we've seen Jason Gilder at service uh, and he's been praying, hey man uh, and then we saw Andy and I, I, I totally forgot about it but your wife said hey at a cell group, you cell group and I know Sister Danielle was involved in that uh, uh, and you prayed him through the Holy Ghost and man I, I'm just all over the place, I said I did well praise God, amen uh, and Andy got baptized just a few weeks ago in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, God is so good to us uh, anything you need, he can give it right. to you Leo. Hey man, everything around you may be in total chaos, uh, but God is your protector and provider. He'll have uh, peace in your life like a river. Let me read it, uh, and I won't take too long tonight from the Message Bible. Uh, Psalms 46 again, but we'll read it in the Message Bible. It says it like this. God is a safe place to hide. 
ready to help when we need him. We stand fearless of the cliff edge of doom. Quite a, a good a graphic uh, uh, words here. Courageous in sea storm uh, and earthquake. Uh, before the rush and the roar uh, of oceans, the tremors uh, that shift mountains, God fights for us uh, and protects us. Uh, then in verse 5 it says it like this. Uh, God lives here. The streets are safe. Uh, God is at your service uh, from the crack of dawn. Amen. Uh, God is not so some uh, little uh, dog, if you will, on a leash, uh, and we can tell him what to do, and we name it and blame it. Uh, I, I, I'm not saying that tonight, uh, but what I'm saying is, uh, whatever you need spiritually, uh, as long as it matches up with the Word of God, uh, as long as it's in the will of God, uh, it's at your service. Amen. Uh, and God came uh, to save and to seek which was lost, uh, but He also came to give you a fruitful life. Uh, so in 20. 24. Uh, I, I know I preached a, a few weeks ago our, our keynote message uh, under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Uh, but also let me remind you in 2024, uh, you have not uh, if you ask not. Uh, you you got to knock the door. Uh, I'm encouraging you. Uh, they that knock on the door, they that wait upon the Lord uh, shall renew their strength. Uh, but you just don't renew your strength. Uh, it says you shall run uh, and not be weary. Uh, you shall mount up. You shall fly. Uh, like eagles. I'm telling you, anything you need, all you have to do is ask the Lord. Amen. That's right. And I have the secret. At least I think I do. Perhaps it changes over time if the Lord speaks to me, but the Lord's been dealing with me. The secret is not, Lord, give us more preachers, and I'm thankful those that preach, and give us more teachers, and we have plenty here tonight. God, give us more money. God, give us more ability. We have all of that. Uh, God, give us this. And I understand when we knock at the door and we're asking the Lord and we're persistent that he'll do it. And sometimes he'll just say, you know what? You're so persistent. Uh, I'll just give it to you anyhow. Amen. Uh, those kind of prayers are needed. Uh, but the ultimate thing uh, is the commandment that the Lord said, uh, the first and greatest commandment. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord and Thou shalt love the Lord thy God uh, with all thy heart and mind and strength. Paraphrase, paraphrasing and spirit. Uh, different translations. Uh, you got to love the Lord. That's the first and greatest commandment. Uh, I, I often have said this uh, to people that I love to preach. Uh, and uh, those that know, sometimes I could go forever. And I'm curtailing that. And I'm going to look over here so I don't condemn anybody over here. But anyways. <laughs> And so I love to preach. I love to preach uh, because that's part of my relationship. Yes, we're called with the, in the kingdom of God, but my relationship with God. Uh, I, I'm kind of. I know I'm weird. Okay, I know I'm crazy to an extent, at least. Uh, Amen. You don't have to agree with that, but hey, I know I'm just a little different. They probably don't even have a right diagnosis for me in the medical field. But I love to preach. And you know, the devil's caused me so much problem. I've been raised in this. Caused me so much problem that I really love to tear the devil's kingdom down. I love to hear the devil say, you can't do it. Because it just gets in my spirit. And I say, oh, is that right? Anytime you say we can't, that means you're lying because you're just the father of lies. We'll go ahead and evangelize. We'll go ahead and have revival. We'll go ahead and build God's kingdom anyhow. Amen. I'm just a crazy, crazy person. And so, love preaching. Love being used to God. Love, love doing things. Love doing everything. I wish I had more time. I wish I had more energy. I wish I had more hours in the day. I, I really do. I wish I had more ability and all these things. So, but recently my prayer has changed as the Lord has dealt with me. And I'm, I'm talking from my heart tonight. Uh, I know we got seasoned, seasoned saints here. And I, I know we got new saints. Uh, and we got those that are learning. And we're always perpetually learning. Uh, and that's how it is with the Lord. Uh, there are seasons. Uh, 
of sacrifices. There's time uh, that we have directional change. And I preached about that seven sacrifices uh, a few uh, months or a year ago. And if you didn't hear it, not because it's me preaching, uh, uh, get back on YouTube and get on the website, FT Church Info. Uh, get on Facebook. And I want you to hear seven sacrifices uh, because it'll show you how to approach the Lord. Amen. Things that the Lord has taught me. Uh, one of it is directional. Uh, that's a constant thing. God, uh, my attitude right? Uh, is my motives right? Uh, am I doing things right? Uh, and if I'm not, I'll repent about it. It's that easy. Uh, others are uh, sacrifice. Uh, uh, it's a sacrifice of praise. I'm going to praise you in the storm and I'm going to praise you on the mountaintop. Uh, I'm going to love you no matter what, Lord. Uh, I'm going to give you praise uh, whether I feel like it or not. Amen. Uh, you know, I'm thankful tonight. Uh, there, this is a place that we can worship. Uh, you're not afraid to worship. You're not afraid to say amen. Uh, and I'm thankful for that. And so I began to revisit that kind of sacrifice in my prayer with the Lord. The Lord began to deal with me. 365 years Enoch lived. And Enoch walked with the Lord. But for 300 years, it says he walked with the Lord. That means for 65 years, he did not walk with the Lord. So something happened at the 65th year. And he decided to walk with the Lord. It did not say that Enoch was a great preacher. Did not say that Enoch was a great prayer warrior. Did not say that Enoch was a great saint and a faithful saint. I'm sure he was, so to speak, in Old Testament times. Genesis time. Didn't say all those qualifications. He used his abilities and gave sacrificially to the Lord. And we need to do that. And, and uh, oh, we need to be faithful and giving and all that. I get that. Didn't say all those things. Those are those important things. I get it. But it said that he walked with the Lord. In other words, uh, he had favor with the Lord. And so what God has been dealing with me is that he's at our service. Not a church service only, but he's at our disposal of anything we want. He asked the question to Simon Peter before his death to open salvation to the entire world and humanity past present future he said Simon Peter thou lovest thou me God were to ask that tonight I believe each and every one of us would say yes Lord we love you Amen. God again asked Simon Peter Simon Peter that thou lovest me Simon Peter was crazy too like me I guess a little <laughs> yes Lord <laughs> you know we left all for you. I'm reminded of Brother Bob Mellon doing that in the play. We left everything for you. Gave the qualifications. In other words, uh, in modern terms, if it were you and I, Lord, uh, we, we did this. Uh, we sold our possessions. Uh, we've done this. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, you get the whole list. I, I prayed him out of this. I, I, I'm sacrificing my, uh, my flesh every day and wants it. And I'm, I'm, I'm repenting of my attitude and whatever. The whole list. Uh, we've done all. i left all for you. Frustrated him. And it was this that Jesus said. Son Peter, thou lovest thou me. Yes, Lord, I left everything for you. And he said, simply feed my sheep. He didn't say, give more. I'm thankful for that. He didn't say, pray more than we should. The ultimate question for you and I that God is asking is, do you love me? If you love me, feed my sheep, he said to Simon. So something happened to Enoch 365 years. And at the 65th year, something, the light bulb, something happened. There was directional change. And the Bible says he walked with the Lord. He walked with the Lord. Enoch was, and then he wasn't. It's a type of the rapture of the church. He walked with the Lord because somewhere he learned that God was at his service. That he could walk with God and ask anything that he wanted. But the true thing with Enoch and even Moses, I'll use Moses. I'm getting to a point here. Laying this foundation, we're almost done. I promise you behind the pulpit, almost done. <laughs> Moses, he asked the Lord, he said, Lord, show me more of your glory. What do you mean, Moses? <laughs> You've seen the miraculous, the Red Sea part. I mean, if I saw water part, I mean, you know, I'd be like, wow, that's enough. I know there's a God, I'm going to serve you. And Moses was. He saw the rod turn into a serpent and back into a rod. Uh, 
I mean, he had manna from heaven, all these things. Uh, he had everything in him, uh, yet he still wanted to see the glory of the Lord. That's, that's a kind of crazy in my opinion. What do you mean, the glory of the Lord? And God said, well, you can't, you can't see it. You're going to die. I'll show you my hinder parts, just a little bit of portion using uh, human terminology. And, and Moses came off the mountain and at one time was glowing with the tablets, etc. We understand that. Um, but Moses was so addicted to the things of the Lord. He wanted the favor of the Lord. In other words, he was asking, show me your glory. Uh, God, I love you so much. Uh, I, I have the, the miracles. Uh, God, I have the possessions. I got the food. I got the house. Uh, I got the manna. I I got everything that I need. Huh? But let me tell you, I don't serve you for my house. Huh? I don't serve you for my healing. Huh? And hear what I'm saying. We praise God for that. Huh? We praise God for the miraculous. Huh? But God, uh, I serve you uh, because I love you. Huh? Simon Peter, huh? do you love me? Huh? Then feed my sheep. Huh? What I'm telling you tonight, uh, in 2024, uh, we have to continually make the decision. Uh, do we love God? And I know I'm preaching to the choir tonight. Uh, do we love God to the point uh, that we're not going to give our qualifications? Uh, we've done this and we've done that. Uh, how hungry are we, to, are we to go deeper with the Lord? To go more with Him. Simply because we love Him. Simply because we love. Would you lift your hands, close your eyes, uh, begin to speak to the Lord tonight. Uh, in the name uh, of the Lord Jesus, uh, we thank you, God, uh, for your spirit. Uh, and we thank you, Lord, uh, your ever-present help uh, in the time of need uh, and in trouble, Lord. Uh, I'm praying, God, that encouragement and strength uh, will always be upon us uh, every time there is trouble, uh, every time there is situations, God. Uh, we want to run to you. We want to walk with you. Uh, we want to be with you. Amen. Uh, praise God. The first thing uh, uh, that I want to say in closing here uh, is that we have to learn that God is an ever-present help uh, in the time of need or trouble. Uh, you can't fix it. Uh, you may have the answer, uh, the human ability to fix it, uh, but you must run to the Lord uh, and say, God, I got this need. Uh, I think I have, and I know I have the solution, uh, but that might not be the solution. Amen. Uh, you have to understand, like Paul said, uh, when I would do good, uh, evil is is still present with me in Romans 7 21 uh, and then in Ephesians 6 12 uh, Paul declares this uh, we wrestle not against flesh uh, and blood in other words uh, we're not fighting one another uh, but against principalities and its powers uh, and against the rulers of the darkness of this world uh, against spiritual wickedness uh, in high places uh, there is still a very real enemy of our souls uh, and this enemy uh, is at work against us uh, day and night uh, and Paul was simply telling us, uh, make sure to understand, uh, make sure not to be ignorant, uh, that the battle uh, is not with one another, uh, but we're battling, battling spiritual forces, uh, and you can't do it on your own, uh, but we have a God uh, that we can pray to, uh, we have a God by the name of Jesus uh, that we can ask uh, anything in His name, uh, and it's possible, uh, what I'm saying tonight, uh, anything is possible, everything can happen, more so than it's already happened, in the last few years. Amen. 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 Anything is possible. And from the Gospels to the Epistles uh, to Revelation, the entire New Testament warns us uh, not to be ignorant uh, of the devil's devices, uh, but that Satan is still the prince uh, and the power of the air, according to Ephesians 2 and 2. Uh, these principalities, uh, they do his constant bidding. They're kind of like his uh, little demons, uh, continually harassing uh, God's people, uh, continually dividing or, or putting gossip, or, and nobody's doing that here, uh, or putting emotions and thoughts to your head. Uh, you don't matter. Uh, what is the use? Uh, give up. Uh, we don't have a solution. Uh, it doesn't matter. Throw in the tail. Uh, you know you think those thoughts. Uh, you know that they come to you. Uh, you know that discouragements come to you. Uh, but all I know... Uh, is that if I ask the Lord to help me, uh, he's a very present help uh, in the time of need. Uh, he is at our service. Uh, don't fight it alone. Uh, don't fight the thoughts alone. Uh, don't fight the discouragement alone. Uh, but go to the Lord in prayer uh, and say, God, I don't understand, uh, but I need you to help me. Uh, God, I have this need, uh, but I know you can help me. I know you can help me. You can help me. Praise God. 
It's extremely dangerous that we rely on ourselves. But I know this. I'm tying it all together. We rely on our own intuition. We rely on our own fixes. Because we miss the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Here, to be honest today. The parable of the lost coin that Jesus gives. Parables. Uh, I believe it. One commentary had said that there are true stories. It's a teachable point of view. Kind of like in the business world. They'll use a real life experience to teach uh, colleagues and, and managers to those that they serve and lead. So Jesus has a teachable point of view. The teachable point of view is simply this. The parable. There was a woman who was sweeping for the lost coin. And some, yes, it's true, it represents typology that that woman is the church sweeping. But understand, she was in the house. And if you're honest, from time to time, you and I are that lost coin on our way to hell, even at points that we're backslidden in heart. Amen. Even preachers have that, that uh, um, ability to be there because we're human. Or perhaps we're not so much backslidden at heart, but we're just not devoting our life entirely to the Lord. I know this kind of cuts a little bit. I know this isn't the jump in the hoopla that we're used to, but it's in the Holy Ghost. Uh, amen. Uh, and so the lost coin represents you and I. The church, the church tries to help the brethren, the sisters, uh, the preacher, if you will, the pastor. Uh, we sweep uh, and we're trying. That's what we're doing tonight. Uh, we're sweeping our soul, the Holy Ghost and this preacher here. Uh, we're sweeping saying, where are you, saint? Uh, where are you, Adam? Uh, you're lost uh, and you don't even know it. Uh, perhaps you're on the way uh, not to glory land, not to heaven, uh, but you're in another destination uh, where hell swallowed up the people uh, that were murmuring gossip. But again, I'm not saying anybody's murmuring gossip. Uh, if you are, pray through it and, and we're Okay, amen. Uh, uh, but you know where you're at uh, because we have the tenacity, uh, we have the habitual thing, and at least I do. Uh, and perhaps I preach to myself, uh, but I've been in this a little while long uh, to know that I'm preaching to you too. Uh, that we try to fix it on our own. Uh, we think that we can do it, uh, but we have somebody, uh, and I hate to use the analogy, but it's the best way I can do it. Uh, just how my mind thinks uh, at Chick fil A, you, you know the restaurants you go to. Uh, you know a good waiter uh, and a waitress uh, and you're going to give them a good tip and we still give them a good tip because we're Christian uh, and we're trying to be a good witness uh, so we'll give them a good 15% at least <laughs> at least man but you know that good waiter and waitress, uh, and they do so good. Uh, they're at your service. Uh, they're right there, uh, and they say anything you need. Uh, and you know what I do? I count how many uh, refills, because I drink a lot uh, of water and soda. Try to stay away from soda. Uh, and I'm like, okay, that's $1. <laughs> okay, $2, $3. Okay, ooh, okay, uh, we're going to bump it up to 2 I know, I'm weird. <laughs> ooh, they're going to get a good tip. Uh, and I still end up giving them a good tip no matter what. Uh, uh, and so uh, they're, they're waiting on you. Uh, anything you need. Uh, okay, you, you want a refill. Uh, Hey, would you, you, you ready for the dessert now that you wanted? Huh? You know the drill. Huh? And then you have that one waiter or waitress. And oh, they're not giving. They're not giving. And oh, man, I don't want to give to them. <laughs> and they're not giving. Huh? And you having to ask them for the water. And you're like, hey, man, they're only serving this table, my table. And they're serving that table. And you're and if, if you're like me, you're, you're observant. And what's their problem? Huh? And then the Holy Ghost is speaking to me. Maybe they're having a bad day. Huh? Why don't you witness to them? Hey, don't get a bad attitude. Huh? Uh, what I'm saying is we know uh, when it's good service uh, and when it's bad service. Huh? But let me tell you why I told you those testimonies. Huh? God huh, has always given us huh? good service. God has always answered our prayers. Amen. We don't have to go overseas and look overseas about testimonies. We got people that were resurrected. We got people off the street. We got people that healed of cancer. We got people that, man, I, I, I can't even teach you yet. The apostles taught you. And I'm having Brother Van Allen and Brother Lloyd's going to help my wife and others I'm going to talk to. And we're trying to teach things. Before we can even teach you God is such a good servant to us. He's already talking to you and giving you revelation of the oneness of God. Giving you revelation of holy living. Because he's at our service. I feel a sweet touch of the Holy Ghost. Would you raise your hands right now? Hey Amen. Would you love the Lord? Hey Amen. Would you thank him tonight? Reach out and thank the Lord for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Because God has always 
been willing to serve you. Would you stand with me tonight? God is at your service. The only way that you're going to make it this year, because it is guaranteed that trials, guaranteed that offenses will come, it is guaranteed that life happens. Some of it, if not most of it, is initiated because of the enemy. Spiritually speaking, again, the enemy will speak with, in an audible way, no doubt, but with emotions. Just how he does it in America. Emotions, discouragement. Amen. You don't matter, perhaps. Or uh, what's the use? Or frustrations. You can fill in the blanks exactly how it is. We don't like to talk about it. Or, hey, you know, such and such family member has come back to the Lord, but yours won't. Or, hey, such and such home is blessed. And, your home and your marriage won't be blessed and whatever it is the enemy always hits and perhaps that doesn't fit you there I don't know but I know one thing is you cannot rely on your intuition I encourage you the Lord is here at your service this year and has always been at our service in this work you must pray and ask God be careful for nothing the Bible says but in all your ways, acknowledge the Lord. That is acknowledging the Lord. Lord, I don't have the answer. My people which are called by my name, we know that name to be Jesus. Jehovah, the Old Testament. Jehovah means that the God, our Savior. My people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. We must understand that humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of the Lord. The scripture says that too. It means God's going to humble us we got to be willing to let him. Humble doesn't mean that we're necessarily doing something wrong. It just means that we humble ourselves and acknowledge God and say, I don't have the answer. I think I have the answer. I know I have the answer. But I'm still going to humble myself and say, Lord, is this the answer? Is this what you want me to do? Is this what you want me to say? Is this the career path for those that are doing going to college. Is this what you want? Is this the person I'm married? Is this et cetera, et cetera, even for our young people, the young adults. My people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, and seek my face. Seek my favor, my face. Walk with me like Enoch. It's a continual thing, church. We have to go to the Lord and say, God, am I doing all right? If I'm not pleased, correct my correct my path if I'm straying off this way, even if it's just a little so I can go back the right way because that's just how it's always going to be in our life. We are always having to take a look at our spirit and how we approach God because God is at your service. Lift your hands and thank the Lord tonight that He is at your, your service. I know it's kind of weird to say God is at your service. God is at my service but it's the truth. He is always there. He was at Moses' service when he was running away. Kill the man. Keep praying. Kill the man running away in the wilderness and in the burning bush there. God was at his service. He was at his service with Peter. Peter, Peter, thou lovest thou me feed my sheep. Not asking what you did last year. Not asking what you did 10 years ago. Not asking who you baptized. Not asking who you gave a Bible study. I'm asking, do you love me? Then keep doing my work. Keep teaching Bible studies. Keep witnessing. Keep evangelizing. Do you love me, Peter? He was at his service. He said, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. I pray for you. I'm at your service. Uh, that your faith fail you not. Uh, didn't pray that you would backslide. Didn't pray that you wouldn't curse that little girl. Didn't pray, uh, but you're going to deny me three times. But I pray for your faith uh, that it would fail you not. Uh, that I am always a present help uh, in a time of need. I'm at your service. Uh, I'm here. I can do wonders. I can do anything that you want. Uh, ask it in my name, and it will be done. With man, it is impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Amen. Would you come tonight, all of us, if you're willing, I don't force anybody, uh, and let's collectively together magnify the Lord uh, and thank Him uh, for His service and His promises to us. Uh, 